So right here, um, as we're kind of warming everything up, there was a tragic thing that happened at my house. You know the monsoon that comes every afternoon here in Central Florida, right? The monsoon came, hi guys, and I'm talking about our, our house down the road. Not at their house, though I was going to get you guys one. I was going um, to yard bomb you with a hibiscus tree. Yeah. So I, I have this hibiscus tree, and it grows like a weed. And all of a sudden, I come out after the monsoon rain, it had cracked in half. <sighs> so I couldn't waste it. So I boiled down those hibiscus leaves and made you all an agua fresca, which is good because I'm going to do a fresca as well, more of a horchata later. In, or 30% of people over 21 in America do not drink. And the other 30% only get, have one drink a month. So we have like 60% of our American population that is of drinking age, not really drinking that much. Yet we make a killing on our bar. So for those of us who are making up the difference, <laughs> we're doing our part. For the others out there um, who don't drink, you can totally relate. You have this like, this feeling of going to the bar and feeling almost like, quote, what they said at the Imbibe conference last year, you feel like a second-rate citizen. You're just getting offered sodas. And, you know, like, maybe there's a lemonade. Maybe there's a iced tea with some, you know, something jazzy happening, like some lavender syrup. I don't know, maybe that, I mean, that could be actually pretty exciting from what we're usually given, right? I'm going to use the cantaloupe seed. And I don't know if, if you serve horchatas on your menu, or if you even know when an horchata is. But an horchata is a traditional Spanish drink, actually. And the Spaniards brought these, this cocktail, this drink, over to the New World, and they landed in Mexico and found a lot of tiger nuts. And then they ground up those nuts and they essentially made a milk out of it, just like we have um, almond milk, which is actually like almond water or horchata. And then if you go to a Mexican restaurant, you'll see. Now they make rice horchatas and oatmeal horchatas. And they slightly season them with a little like uh, warm spices, like cinnamon. But you can look up in your flavor Bible book that I just gave all of you, and you can see, oh my gosh, almonds, it goes so good with vanilla. And then you put a little vanilla in there, and you're like the head of the town, right? Now this cantaloupe. You're not going to believe how much this cantaloupe yields. Or you may, I don't know. You guys aren't very reactive out there. You know, it's very difficult doing demos when none of you actually like, like, you're playing this like mind thing. I know you're entranced by my beauty and the amazing knowledge that is flowing from my mouth right now. But every once in a while, lighten up, or I will move on to the cocktail portion of this and start hawking the alcohol. All right. So you'll see, uh, average cantaloupe yields about, I don't know, half a cup-ish, maybe, of seeds, and you get so much goodness out of it. Scrape it out of here. And I like to get kind of that good soft meat out of the cantaloupe, and I save all the, like, firm meat to serve in um, other applications, or you could evolve this to a whole nother retro red level, and I was just researching, yes, I like to digress, so just hold on, buckle up. Um, I just read this amazing recipe, and it was about pickling cantaloupe. I know, we're from the South. Pickling, I'm, I'm gonna save these for later, okay? Pickling watermelon. We all know about pickling watermelon rinds, or even cooking with watermelon, or like Brandon McClamory from, you know, down there in the Luma, Winter Park area, he just made this watermelon 
Ah, ceviche, that was so ooh la la. Well, I was thinking cantaloupe pickles. This could be a whole nother garnish. We're not going there today, but I'm, I'm thinking inspiration. Okay, I've got a bag of tricks back here. This is all it takes. You guys have this at your restaurants? I know, secret ingredient. Water. One cantaloupe, the seeds of one cantaloupe, a bottle of water, which is like almost two cups, right? A tablespoon-ish of honey. It depends how sweet your melons are. You may not eat a lot. We probably don't eat a lot. So I'm gonna put about a half a tablespoon. This is more of a taste-as-you-go recipe because the melons are gonna change in sweetness. And then two teaspoons of Chinese five spice. I know, you're giving me that look. Why would you do that? Well, you know, you look up these references or you know cantaloupe is good with these, these spices. My father used to serve us black pepper over our cantaloupe. Does anybody do that? You do salt with watermelon, but you don't do black pepper with cantaloupe? You yeah, should. It's really good. And then, the, you know, the, I'm thinking, I'm crafting this recipe, and I'm thinking horchata has these cinnamony spices, but I like the black pepper from my childhood. Let's do some experience, experimenting. And a one-shop spice has black pepper, uh, Chinese five spice, uh, what is it? No, 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 no. Star anise, rather. Cinnamon, all these spices. And voila, it's when I mix it up. For dramatic effect, I'm going to actually plug in my blender. <laughs> I'm going to blend it up. And you're going to have a pretty high power blender, but we all have one in our kitchen. Or now, you know, everybody has that famous one, that ninja. Okay. I mean, it's really this simple, guys. This simple. You can serve it like this. I mean, you can actually ice it down, but I kind of think it's really good like this. I'm going to let David try it. Does it not taste like a holiday eggnog, but made with cantaloupe? It's oddly satisfying, refreshing, right? Jane will try it too. Okay. I actually made it and the cantaloupe sort of warm and I'm like, ooh, it tastes like eggnog. I mean, you could then at that point add the rum to it, okay? But if you let it sit overnight and it starts to macerate all those flavors, right? And it gets stronger and stronger and more intense, then, oh yeah, I should try it because it's been macerating overnight. You have to compare the fresh agua fresca versus the horchata that's been sitting. And it sat on the seeds and it's extracted all those flavors, right? Then I strained it. Dramatic effects that you learn. I strained it and then I served it. It has just a little different funk to it. Real good, kind of like intense flavor. See, vegan hot dogs, what do you think? Can we do a Chinese uh, vegan hot dog and then uh, pair it, or a Mexican vegan hot dog, and pair it with the flavors so you either have the Chinese five spice or the vegan hot dog, like a Mexican version? Are we, are we going somewhere with this? I like it. And no food waste. You have your water. You have, if you're using melons, you have melons, or you make another cocktail, you make some kind of actually fresh melon ball martini. And then you spice it up with things that you have around the kitchen. And if you have like a fun gray short rib on your menu that you're adding a little Chinese five spice because the five spice that star anise makes your meat taste meatier. See, you're learning a lot, aren't you? Right up. 